today I'm very excited to be bringing you my first ever sponsored tutorial. Barely Art got in touch with me through Instagram and asked if I'd like to try some of their glue. I said I would and they very kindly sent me this lovely little influencer box. So let's have a look what's inside. So here is the glue, it's called a Precision Craft Glue. This is a 4 ounce bottle, 118 milliliter bottle. It's non-toxic, it dries clear, it's flexible so it doesn't crack, wrinkle resistant, clump resistant, strong holding and long lasting and there's lots of other really good points about it on there and it can be used for lots of different things so scrapbooking, paper crafts, artwork decoration, other crafts and glitter. And then in here we've got this fabulous refill and this is a 325 milliliter refilled 11 ounces in this lovely bear shaped bottle. We've also got in here a separate lid for the glue. So in this little pot here we've got the applicator tips, we've got a fine and an ultra fine that's the little storage tip there and then you get this pin for cleaning out the tips after use so that the glue doesn't dry hard in there and these all twist on to the top of this part so let's just pop those back in there for now I wanted to make a piece that would test how the glue worked with wood and with fabric so I designed this little shoe storage rack come bench which I think you're going to enjoy. As usual the cutting list is in the description box below so let's get started and see how we get on with the glue. We're going to begin by making the side pieces which will look like this. So take five of your short supports, two of them will be the legs so just pop three of them to one side like that, turn two of them onto their side and we're going to do a pencil mark three millimetres from the bottom of each one. That's one eighth of an inch. Little pencil mark there like that. And then 16 millimetres from the bottom or five eighths of an inch. So 3 millimetres from the bottom and 16 millimetres from the bottom, 1 eighth of an inch and 5 eighths of an inch. And just do a little pencil mark for each of those. Turn the legs that way, bring in your three supports like that and apply glue to each end of each support. And as usual I've dispensed a little bit of the glue onto my card. I'm using a cocktail stick to apply it. Stick the first support so it's at the top of the legs. You've got a nice flush line along the top there. The second one will then sit above that central pencil mark. Again, press it against the leg. A little bit more glue on the bottom one and again that will sit above that bottom pencil mark. Again, press that into place and then you can bring in the remaining leg and press it into place and just make sure that those supports are sitting again above those pencil lines. So just really carefully press it all together. You can manoeuvre the support if you need to. I just need to pull that one down a little bit. And make sure as well that all the pieces are sitting flat to your work surface. Just really carefully press it together. You might find it all flies apart. And then just slide that along your work surface so that it's not stuck to the surface and that can be left to dry. So now bring in four of your long supports and the four slat supports which are cut from your thinner strip. And we're going to glue a thin strip to the side of each of the thicker supports. 
So apply glue along one edge of your thinner strip. Pop that back down and just press the two together a little bit fiddly. Make sure you've got a flush line at each end. Make sure both pieces again are pressed flat against your work surface. Once this is glued, I'll pick that up and show you what that should look like. I just want to get rid of that excess glue along the join there so that our slats will sit nice and flat. So just looking from another angle there, that's what it should look like. So just stuck alongside there and we're just creating a lip that our slats will then sit in on each side. So do that with all four pieces. We're now going to make the shelves and I've made the first one here just to show you how that will look. So position the strips on your work surface so that the narrower strips are on the inside. And then take one of the slats and just apply a little bit of glue at each end of the underside of the slat. Like that. And then position the slat so that it's sitting on the narrower strip and so that it's flushed with the end of the strip and then tuck the other end on the top of the other narrow strip like that we'll join in the two pieces together again you want this nice flush end at this end and you've got time to manoeuvre that if you need to and then press the pieces down like that And then take another strip and again apply a little bit of glue at each end. We're going to place this one at the other end of the two strips. And again sitting on that little strip in the centre there. The little lip. Let me just turn that around. So again, make sure you've got a nice straight line along the end. And then sort of push it in and that will square the piece off. Be really careful when you're pressing it together, it, just in case it all sort of pings apart. Like that. So now bring in your wool and we're just going to make a little pencil mark in the centre of the wider strip. So just do a little mark there and on the other side and we're now going to place a strip right in the centre so if you want to you can put a little mark in the centre at each end of the slat as well but I'm just going to place mine by eye so again put your glue on and then place that so it's sitting centrally over those pencil lines, or in front of the pencil lines rather. Look from the front, and again you've got time to manoeuvre if you need to. If you hold one end in place and then position the other end, and then again press it down. And we're going to do the same thing again in each of these gaps, so measure the distance between the two slats, and then do a little pencil mark in the centre again on that wider strip do that over the other side as well and along that top edge and again we're going to position a couple of slats centrally below those marks I'll just check in the slat there to see 
which was the nicest side and then I have that side facing upwards and that's a good little habit to get into so you always have the nicest edge of the work showing so again position that centrally do it at one end and then you can maneuver the other end into position like that do your little pencil marks on the slat if you're not very good at positioning by eye press that down same over the other side and it's just easier doing it this way than going along and doing all those little pencil marks that we'd need and positioning the slats that way and if you're very good at positioning by eye you don't even need to worry about the pencil marks you could just sort of go along and do it by eye and then the remaining slats we're going to sit in the centre of each of these gaps and again just doing that by eye so you should have an equal gap at each side of the slat and just work your way along and I must say so far I'm really impressed with this glue one of the things I was worrying about was that it wouldn't dry quickly enough so that you can move on to the next stage fairly quickly but it is actually drying or, or taking rather quickly so I'm just able to carry on which I like to do I know you can have other projects going but it's so much easier if you can just get one part of one project done and it's very strong as well pieces that I've done I've tested and they're sticking together really well so so far so good and the final slat in that final little gap press those all down and then you can turn the piece over put it flat on your work surface and just go in there with your spare cocktail stick and remove any excess glue which will be sitting along the end of those slats there's not too much there and that piece can then be left to dry once the pieces are constructed the shelves are going to be very close together so it's going to be very difficult to get into all the little gaps in between the slats and what have you so I advise painting the pieces now before the next stage of construction and I've just mixed a couple of coloured wood dyes here in this plastic pot just got a little bit of each the light oak and dark oak just to make a sort of shade in between and I've got my latex gloves on just to protect my skin from the wood dye Work your way along the edges of the slats as well so you're not leaving any natural wood showing. Once the wood dye is completely dried we can continue with construction but just begin by making sure that the little divides fit nicely into the gaps in the side pieces. And if necessary, just make a small adjustment just using the tip of your craft knife and just shave a little slither off the end of each one. And I've just had to do that with a couple of these. And it's just when you apply the wood dye, it can add to the length of a piece. So you may have a little bit of trimming to do. Pop those out like that. So we're going to begin by attaching the divides and this will create that little section at the end for the baskets. Now if you don't want to include the baskets then there's really no need to include the divides. And we're going to attach them so they sit at the left hand edge of this fourth divide from this end. So we're going to glue them in the place, into place just there. But first of all, just make sure that on both pieces, your fourth slat along is in exactly the same place. And if not, then you can just make a little pencil mark on one of your shelf pieces to show where you need to sit the divide. So just apply glue to one end of the divide like that. 
and then pop it into place. Make sure it's sitting on the strip and not actually overlapping the slat. So it's just along the edge of that slat there. Just need to go over a little bit with mine. Press that into place. And don't worry if it's not staying upright because we can put that upright when we attach the other shelf. And then do the same again at the other end. Or other side rather. These can then be left to dry and you can do the same on your other shelf piece. We're now going to attach the bottom shelf to the leg section so that it sits level with that bottom support there. So apply glue to one end of your shelf so that your little divides are nearest to the right hand side or right hand end. There. You also want it to be flush along the front and back of the legs. It will be the same width. Press it into place and that first slat should be flush with that support, with the top of that bottom support. So just let that dry off for a moment and then we'll attach the next shelf. So leave the piece on its side like that but just begin by applying a little dot of glue to the top of each of those divides. And then bring in the remaining shelf and again apply glue along that edge so that your divides are closest to the right. So carefully get the side piece into place first, sitting on that support bar and so that it's flush with the top of the bar and then you can just very carefully ease it down and push the divides together. Just be really gentle with it. The same on the other side there. Make sure your shelf is staying where it should. Again, I'm going to leave the excess glue and just let that dry off for a moment and then we can attach the two long support strips. So again, just begin by applying a little dot of glue to the top of each of those divides. And then to one end each of those longer strips, or the top supports I think I've called them in the cutting list. And that will sit right at the top there and on the back leg. Press it into place there first and then you can sit it on the top of the divide. Just really carefully squeeze that together And doing the same with the remaining one. So sit him right at the top of the front leg. And then press it against the top of the divide. And as well so that you've got a nice flush edge along there. Just check with your finger. Again, we'll just leave that to dry off for a moment, probably about 30 seconds to a minute. We can now attach the final side piece, so apply glue to all of the ends. Little dot on each of the supports as well. And 
it will all feel very fragile at the moment but once we've got this side on and secured it and then got the cushion on as well it will be a more sturdy piece there. so get your top piece on first so that your supports are going right into the top of those legs and you might just need to manoeuvre them either pull them out a little bit and then you can come around that way make sure that the shelves are sitting flush with those supports and keep checking that everything's staying where it should and once you've got it where you should where it should be you can give it a little press and just be really gentle with it Once the glue begins to take, you can sort of pick it up and have a look around it and make sure that it's all sitting where it should. It's all looking nice and square. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is pop it back up there like that. And I'm going to put a piece of masking tape right over this end. So again, just be really gentle with it. Pull it over firmly. At the same time, just making sure you're not knocking anything out of place. and sort of have a peep around to make sure everything's staying where it should, have a little peep inside. That shelf just needs to go down a tiny bit on that side. And always just being really careful when you move things around. That bottom one as well, that looks okay. Still got a little bit of excess glue in there, so now I've got the tape on. We can get in and remove that. Okay, so we'll leave that to dry off now. And we'll make a start on the seat. Cut a piece of card, leave in about a millimetre around each edge, and that will just allow for the thickness of the fabric. And I'm just using serial packet card for this. Apply double sided tape to one side of the card. And then for the seat cushion, I'm using this 6mm upholstery foam, nice sort of pliable foam. And I'm going to glue the card to the foam, so apply glue oops, directly to the card. I think I might have a little bit too much there. Just scrape some of that off. So stick that to the foam, and I'm just gluing that along one straight edge there. Just pop a piece of kitchen towel on top of there, and then you can weigh it down with a couple of books. And that can be left to dry. Once the glue has dried, you can cut around the piece of card. piece of fabric to fit around the foam so that you're leaving about a 20 millimeter border or three quarters of an inch border. You can then remove the backing from the double sided tape. Can't get hold of it then. Like that. And begin by folding over a long edge. Don't pull it too tightly because you don't want to distort the foam and pull over the other long edge like that. And then take your scissors and we're going to cut away this square at the top at each corner. Doesn't want to come off that one. 
and we're then going to cut a strip at each corner so you want to now cut into the corner at the bottom of the foam so you just cut in a little strip like that which we're then going to fold along the edge of the foam Okay, and do that at each corner. And then I'm actually just going to trim a little bit off of each end of all three flaps there. some space. For this next bit I'm actually going to attach the larger of the two nozzles and that just fits on there really easily. Just press that down, make sure it's on properly. And then I just want to apply a little bit to the foam. Bit of a bubble there. And then you can press down those little flaps. as well. And then apply a bit more glue to that larger flap of fabric. I'm actually just going to use the cocktail stick just to spread that out evenly. rather than wasting it and then you can pull that flap over and stick it down on the back trim off any little loose threads and then again using that nozzle just squeeze a little bit of glue into each of the sort of gaps in the fabric and then squeeze those together and that just really neatens off the corners. Same at the other side. I just pulled another thread out there so I'll just snip that off. Like that and that gives us a nice neat edge to the seat. So do the same at the other end, pull off those loose threads, apply a bit of glue to the foam, this little nozzle makes it really easy when you're getting glue into smaller areas like this. Press that down. I'll just put a little bit more onto that flap. Not too much. Spread it out so it's covering all of the fabric. And then fold that over as well. I've got a little bit of fabric hanging there, so I'm just going to lift that up and then just snip that away at an angle like that. So obviously we don't want that showing underneath the seat. I think I'll do the same at that other end as well. We're just on the inside of that other end, so that's okay. And then again, put a little bit of fabric into those gaps, a little bit of glue rather side as well. In fact I'm just going to lift that flap up if the glue hasn't dried too much. I just want to pull that a little bit tighter and a little bit of a bubble there in the fabric so I'll just put a little bit more glue on and spread that in. Just pull 
that over a bit tighter. Squeeze the corners together. So I just want to add a little bit of fabric now to the bottom just to cover up the folds and the gap there. So just cut a piece of fabric that's going to fit just on the inside edge of the underside of the cushion there and then apply glue to the fabric. And I must say I'm really impressed with this as a fabric glue as well. Again it dries really quickly so you don't have to wait around before you can continue with the next stage. Try not to put the cushion back down in the glue there. And just glue that into place. And we can now attach this to the seat part. So I'm leaving the nozzle on there and I'm just going to apply a little bit of glue around the top of the frame. Don't really need to put too much on there. And I'm going to use the cocktail stick just to spread that around evenly. And then choose the nicest edge of your cushion to have facing forwards. That's mine there. And then glue that into place. Just carefully press it down. Make sure it's sitting evenly on all edges. I'm just going to weigh that down whilst the glue dries. So I'm going to put a bit of kitchen towel on there first just to protect the fabric. And then I'm going to sit the refill bottle on there just to weigh it down. And that can then be left to dry. To construct the baskets, begin by applying glue to each edge of the base piece. side pieces. Bring in a couple of spare pieces of strip wood and you can just push that together. Make sure all the pieces are flat against your work surface. And then just gently push that along so it's not sticking to your worktop. You can carry on with the other basket. We can then attach the front and back pieces. So apply glue along the front and back edges. Pull that back down. Attach the pieces and just pull those side pieces out if you need to so that you've got nice flush edges along each side. side out a little bit and then you can bring your strip wood back in and press all of that together. That can then be left to dry and you can complete the remaining basket. And we're going to start by making a little handle which will go at the front of the basket and I'm using this rigging cord it's called and it's about half a millimetre thick comes on a roll like that but you just want a, a thin string or thin cord or something like that and then apply a little bit of glue in the middle of the basket just on the bottom half like that and then fold your string into a loop and attach it so that the loop comes to the top of the box. 
pull it down into the glue like that. You might want to use another cocktail stick just to press it into place. And then you can trim off the overhanging strings underneath the basket. Cut a piece of fabric, or like I'm using a piece of canvas, for the bottom of your basket. Measuring about 135 millimetres by 15 millimetres, and that's five and a quarter inches by five eighths of an inch. Now, because this glue dries quite quickly, I found it's best to apply it in sections. So begin by applying it along the front, just along the bottom half. And then making sure you've got a straight edge in your fabric, lay the centre of the fabric across the bottom of the crate like that. Press it down. Hold it into place and come around the side and then you can apply a little bit more glue. Pull the fabric across like that. Again, press it down. Turn the basket and you can go around the other side. Pinch in your corners like that as you go. And just trim away one half of the fabric at the back there. Apply a bit more glue. Fold that bit down. And then just check if you need to trim the remaining fabric. And I'm just going to take a little bit off the end there. and then apply glue to that whole sort of flap of fabric. And then press that down as well. Hold the join and you can crease that corner in. And then come back around and make a little cut up each corner like that. Apply glue to one of the long flaps. Press that down. This is where your fingers get nice and messy. Turn it around and apply glue to the other long flap. And then just snip away an angle at each corner of the remaining flaps. And then you can glue those under as well. One. Make sure your little handle isn't sticking to the wood. You can just pull that down gently if it is. Cut a second piece of fabric for the top of your basket. Again, the same size, so 135 millimeters by 15 millimeters. 
that's five and a quarter inches by five eighths of an inch and this piece we're going to feed around the top of the basket so we'll start at the front again so pull the little handle down and hold it down like that at the front and then apply glue along that front edge and then put the centre of the fabric along there, pressing it right down onto the top of your first fabric so that you've got a nice join there and no wood can be seen between the two pieces tuck the little handle up and then come around the side, same thing again And you'll find that a cotton fabric sticks easier as well. With that canvas you really have to press it against the wood and hold it. But this is sticking really nice and easily. We'll come around the other side. Let's turn it the other way around so I can get to it easier with the glue. Just trim a little bit of that first flap off again. Stick that down. And I'm just going to trim a little bit off there. And then apply glue to the flap. together and then we're going to stick it down on the inside of the box. I'm just going to put a little bit more glue on my card. We're now going to apply glue to each of the edges on the inside of the box, so to the wood in there. I'm going round quite quickly so it doesn't have a chance to dry off before I'm ready. And then fold in the side like that and at the same time pull in the front and back and then press the fabric down against the sides. Because it's quite a shallow box you might want to bring in a paintbrush or the end of a pencil or something to push those, push the fabric against the sides and I'm going to use a end of a paintbrush there. Just really press it in like that. Down into those corners. And then you just want to cut a little bit of fabric to fit on the inside. That was the end of that strip I cut earlier. Just trim a little bit off the side as well. So we'll apply glue to the back of the fabric there. And then lay that in the bottom of the basket. of the basket. And there's the finished basket. And there is the completed piece. I really hope you've enjoyed this project. 
I really enjoyed making this piece and using the Burley Art Precision craft glue, which I must say I'm really impressed with. It worked equally as well as a wood glue and a fabric glue. It takes really quickly so that you can get on with the project without having to hang around before you can move on to the next stage, which is one thing I really like about it. And the applicator tips are really useful as well. So overall a really great product and one that I would definitely recommend. So do go and have a look at the Burley Art website. They're also on Instagram where they run regular giveaways. So if you're on Instagram, do go and give their page a follow. And I'll pop the website address and the Instagram address in the description box below. So that's it for now. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you again soon.